HS heads, so it's the biannual clean for my horn today. So I'll just lob that in the bath. We'll check back and see how that's getting on a bit later. So it's been ages since I've done a how-to vlog. Wait. So this vlog, we're gonna do uh, a bit about how to do a practice diary or a journal. Uh, but before we get into that, I'm heading off down the road to a church at the bottom of my road where my old school music teacher is giving an organ recital. Should be pretty cool. Hey, it's Sunday morning, and I do want to talk about practice journals. But first, it's off to the Hearts Jazz Festival to play with the Hearts Youth Jazz Ensemble. Okay, so we had a good gig yesterday at the Hearts Jazz Festival. The band played great. Some real young jazz musicians playing in front of a real jazz audience, which is a great experience for them. Uh, everyone had a really good time. It went down really well. So now today, it finally gives me a chance to talk about practice journals. How you use a practice journal is going to be a personal thing to you. So I'm just going to tell you a few ways which I use mine. Um, so first and foremost, it's got to be a log of what you did and how you did it on what days. Then you can keep personal comments as to how you feel things went, how you were playing that day perhaps, uh, things that are coming up, things you want to work on, things that come out of those little bits that you were practicing. Um, so yeah, so it could be whatever you want it to really. So this is how I do it. So the first thing I do is I set goals for that month. I do it on a monthly cycle. So I set goals for that month. Okay, so we have October 2019. So goals. So my main goal this month is to make more sense in my musical lines. So that comes with, especially at high tempo. And also in the minor. So that's my kind of goal for this month. To help me achieve all that, I'm gonna find a transcription that works. And I might try and vlog that. So there are my goals uh, for the month. Uh, all of those mini goals, monthly goals, lead up to sort of slightly longer goals uh, in terms of what I want to improve in my playing. Uh, and that then improves, and then that leads to even longer, even longer goals in terms of where I want to be with my career and things like that. So then I write out some sessions. So now I'll write out the sessions. So I have my warm up, 
which always stays the same. Caruso six notes and the Bill Adams lead pipe routine. Uh, then I have what I call starters, which are little things that just kind of get my brain going or get my fingers going. They may look at a specific thing that I'm trying to learn, um, but they are on a rotation. So they happen once every day or so, once every couple of days. I've been working on uh, recently a warm up on treating dominant chords. So that includes an altered chord using Clark number two. Uh, an augmented chord using triad pairs, which is quite cool, uh, cause if you go around the cycle of fourths, once you've done the first two, it's the same arpeggios over and over again, just in different inversions. Then we have a dominant flat nine. Uh, and we'll be using Schlossberg's number 32B. Uh, and instead of playing the scale that Schlossberg's written, we're going to use a half whole tone scale. Uh, and then the final one, over a dominant uh, seven sharp 11. Uh, and we're gonna use Clark two again, but we're gonna use Lydian dominant. So some cool things on my uh, dominant seven warm up. Then I have the different sessions, which I split out, which probably take me half an hour, 40 minutes to get through one of these sessions. So maybe I'll do two or three a day. And these range from technical stuff, uh, improvisation stuff, and all the basic trumpet facility stuff as well, if I feel I need to really go back to basics at any point, just to, if I've had a really rough week or so. So then, I don't know if you can see this, I put them all into a table. So down this side, I have the sessions. And across here, I have the date. Every day I do one of the sessions or something, gets a little tick and at the end of the month you can see how many days you did whatever and at the bottom there's bits for space for other things like gigs and such and such that I was doing that might take away from some of the practice that I was doing so I might not practice as many hours if I've got a gig then we get on to the journal side of it so I won't do something every day it's just if I feel like writing something down so here you go, here's a good one. 6th of March, we're looking at March, just that's where I opened it. Great sound, easy date. So I was working on the Cherokee at 265 BPM. It was something I felt like I wanted to work on. And here you can see I gave myself a little um, improvisation rule, like an improvisation game, uh, where I could only start my phrases on the upbeat. Uh, and I said, it felt like I thought about it more and it made me get the swing time and the swing feel really into gear. Um, so there you go, that's the sort of things you can write. What else have I got? Here you go, the, the, um, the transcription. So I was gonna do a transcription. Here we go, this is one that we'll know. The 21st of the third, so that's 21st of March. Uh, the transcription coming along, vlog it tomorrow and that's what I did. That was this one. So then at the end of the month, I do a little review as well. So where is it saying? There we go. So we've got things like saying, swing at 275, going well. Work between 270 and 280 next month. So I'll give myself another goal for next month to develop that. Cherokee, tick. Got a tick, I can now do it. Transcription, tick, it was vlogged. 
So that's how I use my practice diary. So it's coming right up to the start of another month. So it's a good time to get going if it's something that you've not done and you want to get into. Hope that was useful. Uh, got another duet coming up soon with Wes Frankel. So keep an eye out for that one. But yeah, see you soon.